Triple Dub, Aura Radio, AuraRadio.com. We make the world better. The sounds of none other than I'm Rick James. Yeah. <laughs> Mary Jane. People under the stairs would get hip. And are you hip or are you not hip? What are you on? Why are you tripping? Don't be tripping. Release yourself. Because right about now, I am joined in the studio with none other than my baby sister. Long time, long time, long time. Sister Alicia Miles. Peace, sis. Peace, peace. Welcome to Over Radio. Oh, man, thank you for having me. It's a what, pleasure. What so glad to be in the building, hey, you that's know. Up, hey, that's <laughs> up. What you been doing? That's what I want to know. The usual, working, working. Working some more, working a little bit, and just want to think I can't work no more. That's right. Work again. You're a worker. That's it. One of the workers' workers. Yeah, buddy. Now, for those of you that don't know, Houston's on. You graduated from HSPVA, right? Yes, I did. Don't play. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. HSPVA. Only the best. Only the best. (laughs) HSPVA. Now, uh, who are some of the people that came out of school at HSPVA when you came out? Around the time that I came out, um, the amazing Chase Jordan. Brian Shout out Conklin, to Chase. Um, Bernice Earl Travis. Bernice Earl Travis. Oh, yes, amazing bass player. He tours with uh, Oh, Glass Brother Burner. Bernice. Oh, yeah, Bernice yeah. is dope. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, there's so many. Ernest Prince, bass player. Um, the Dion's. Um, Dude, Valencia Prince, dope vocalist. There's dope people. And most Major of these people, Johnson. Major Johnson. Now, a lot of these people that you name end up going on to be background instrumentalists and vocalists and all these things that aren't always in the front. And that's right. one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about right. also today. Now, the first time we met, you were very young in your artistry. Like, I remember you were like pretty young in yeah, your artistry. Man. This is, we're talking about 10 years at least. Yeah, I started, I started working professionally as an artist at the age of 14 mm-hmm. so it has been quite a while um, and I, ooh, so wait whoa ooh, wait a second yeah so it's been more than 10 years it's, it's been a while <laughs> it's been a oh, while yeah. little baby lord yeah. we were just Lord. we were just at ovations and uh michelle tebow and mm-hmm. i were talking about how that was kind of my first introduction to the whole crew to everybody, um, one of the high volume showcases oh, yeah. at Ovations, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. where uh, my brother, my brother, and I'm always forever, forever remember my brother. It's the first time I ever met Kamante. Shout out Kamante. Um, he had on that tunic, and I used to say that. Then I, I was a kid. And she I was said like, that boy had a tunic. I was on. like, Mama, that man's got on a leather skirt, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he always still to this day we argue Let me back tell you and forth about that. Let me tell you something. Gotta love Kamante. Kamante is the only dude I've ever seen. Rock like a bearskin rug. That's what show. I'm saying. And, and rock it. Like, yeah, yeah. He's not like rocking a bearskin rug and not rocking right, it. Right. Like he's rocking a bearskin rug and he's making you be like, why right. aren't I barefoot I at one. my show right, with like, a barefoot I need, rug? I need to go <laughs> with a bear. I need to lay get one. Lay on it. Exactly. He got me want to spit LL Cool J. I need love on. <laughs> anyway. And do wrong. Shout out to Kumba Freak. If you ever see that name somewhere, go check them out. Oh, yes, absolutely. Now, um, so speaking of your evolution as an artist, so I remember you were first by yourself, just kind of a little Tiffany getting it yeah. on. I'm saying it. <laughs> and then I saw you evolve into not only this mother, but this spiritual uh, based artists where I remember a lot of artists and, and, and not saying that you are ever spiritual based but there's a difference when you can see it on somebody yeah. versus hey I'm really good at singing and I'm dope and I'm about to blow that's cool but when you see someone evolve into a full rounded hey God's got a purpose on my life right. this is how I'm getting it in I re- I've seen that transition Absolutely. and let's talk about that let's talk about what, what was that because you yeah. I've seen you at showcases trying to get deals I've seen you now work with award-winning producers and yeah. vocalists and all these different things yeah. what does that look like from high school to right now no from 14 to right now as a black woman in the music industry it looks like taking every stumble and every step in stride hmm. like it looks like embracing for me it was embracing all the falls you know Every successful person has failed That's right. several times first. That's right. And so I had to embrace my failures and I had to decide whether or not I was going to let them hold me back 
from what I felt my divine purpose was. That's what I'm talking about. I was going to let them propel me forward. Because it's either or. It's either or. Either it's going to break you, and you're going to be like we said, those people who are like, yeah, I took a break because, man, you ain't killed me. They hurt my feelings. Yeah, they be in the corner. They be some of the dopest people you've ever seen in your life, but they will never make it back. Because they they broken. They 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 let the game break them. Yeah, they got broken. Not even the game. They let life break them. And so for me, I took took those life failures. Mm -hmm. I took those professional failures and I, I shaped them and molded them into music. Which is dope. And I let them push me forward. That's right. That's until right. Until somebody took notice. Now, <laughs> and that's and, what I did. And so, and, and so when you say took notice, who took notice? Andre Harrell. Um, first and foremost, Andre Harrell, there was a, the, I guess kind of you could kind of say like that turning point in my career was that, mm. that space where there was a superstar soul search, mm-hmm. Houston. You know, I'm telling all my folks that at, at this point, I finally got it. I was like, you know, it's not about who's the best. It's about who has the most people screaming for them. Mm-hmm. So I let all my folks know, hey, I'm going to do this competition. Y'all come out to this club and root for me. It's middle of the afternoon, like on a Saturday. Right. And they came. Right. And, and I, I killed you. as usual. And But I heard, like, you can look like the YouTube videos online of it. I guess I killed as usual. And, you know what I'm saying? And so you That's can hear H-town. people screaming, you know. Uh, people are yelling my name. <laughs> Killed as usual, right? And so, oh, you know, because I'm a killer. So after the after the competition, um, he chose three winners, myself and two other singers, and um, invited us to dinner that night at like you know Schmick and McCormick, McCormick and Schmicks or somewhere Schmick that I'd never ever McCormick be able to afford. Schmick on my own. Okay, let's Schmick you know, and Schmick, and Schmick and McCormick, you know, can't McCormick. even say it right. <laughs> never been there, can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> so. He invited us all to dinner there, and I think I was the only artist that showed. Mm. And so, Are to him, serious? to him, that kind of spoke to Andre something. Harrell. Yeah. Oh wow. And so nobody else showed up. Nobody else showed up. It's just you. Just me. See, that's called divine appointment, right there. You know. And so I got an appointment with Destiny. I didn't he, know it was going down. It gets better. And so, you know, I'm meeting with him, and he's telling me, you know, the other the other judges didn't really want to choose you, but I could see something in you. Mm. So if you're ever in New York. You know, after the competition, you know, we're going to Atlanta to compete. If you're ever in New York, definitely give me a call. So I bought a plane ticket to New York, obviously. I think I remember that. <laughs> remember I remember I that. York, you were right? like, yo, I'm going to I'm see going this to man. Yeah, like, I remember I'm going. that. Like, and I, I got to New York. I, I'd arranged to stay with a friend of mine. I got to New York and called him. And within two hours, I was with Andre. I was in Robin Thicke's house. In the studio, you know, and so it like that. The rest is history from there. Like you know, things to be changed. able to before things it all change, changed, huh? Before everything turned, <laughs> like uh, something had happened. Exactly. It was that loop. It, it was just. It was. An, it was that awakening moment. It right. was that moment where I was like, okay, you know, I'm here. I'm. I'm. I'm doing this. I'm mm-hmm. holding my own. Hmm. I'm learning. I'm growing. Like it was a. It was a mentorship without even being a mentorship. Like just to see. And, and learn and grow and for him to take me into just some of the places he goes in a regular day. And then from there, he introduced me to Carvin and Ivan, who are, you know, Grammy Award winning production team. And they said, you know, the same thing. And I, I bought a plane ticket to go for a weekend and come home or go for a week and come home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, I was there for and, three days. This and left and came back. Like, I was there for three days and he was like, well, you, we don't have to change that plane ticket because you got to go to Philly and record. And right. I was like, well, I'm on my way. So, and it was like, you know, one of them, mama, I ain't coming home. Right. <laughs> so, Put mama on the phone. Right. You know, and so it was just from there to go to meet Carvin and Ivan and to, to be in a, in a space with spiritual people who are believers and, and who were, you know, genuinely good people. To work in that capacity, to be in a capacity where, and it changed my, like, it just changed my view from that point forward. Like, you go somewhere, and this man wakes up at 7 in the morning. Right. His studio is in his house. Right, and he gets it in. And he works every day, all day long. See, that's a different. to go to worship. Right, and and come back back home. And work some more. And comes back to work. And so I came back home with a whole new perspective. Like, yo, y'all like, man, y'all miss me with all of this. Because we working, and I'm working nonstop, and I'm working, and, and he was the one who told me, you know, for every seed you sow, this year you'll reap every day next year and i was like word wow but you work. just actually have to sow the seeds you and you gotta, gotta put the in the work you, you have to slow work. down long enough to handle your work yes exactly